Hello to my peers watching this video. I will be presenting on the Japanese conceptual photographer Yasumasa Morimura. Because our peer Dexter is also presenting on this artist, I will not be going into detail on Morimura's education. To begin, Morimura was born in Osaka, Japan in 1951 and still lives in his family home in East Central Osaka. He's an only child to well-established tea merchants and described himself as a child to be a loner. He graduated Kyoto City University of Arts in 1978 and was Ernest Sato's apprentice for eight years. Morimura idolized Ernest Sato um, and he was a professor at KSEU and staff photographer for Life Magazine. Sato's father was Japanese and his mother American. His biracial identity caused much inner and outer conflict, especially during World War II, where he felt displaced and unaccepted by both countries, which is why his Venice was Sato's favorite place. Um, he saw it as a haven of people who had lost their country and refugees would go there where there would be no race. This premises of multiple and conflicting identities comes into focus later when Morimura reaches international fame in Venice with his art. Morimura impersonates various figures from art history, pop culture, and politics. His works have since expanded outside the context of Western canons, but the themes um, his works employs remains the same. These themes are the deconstruction of binaries, fixed concepts, and collective recollections. He transforms into unrecognized or into recognizable Western canon slash masterpieces through mediums such as costume, makeup, props, digital manipulation to make these self-portraits. He addresses issues of Japanese relationships to Western culture as well as cultural and sexual appropriation. In doing so, he imposes hybridity and addresses Orientalist binaries such as the self and the other which have all come to a point of tension in the age of globalism. It's important to keep in context the notion of false disguise when examining Morimura's work. Um, it's when the impersonator of one sex playing the role of the opposite sex is having no purpose to deceive the observer, observer and may in fact need to make that knowledge explicit, explicit for artistic purposes. Here, the emphasis is on the uncanny in which his face, which is presents as Japanese and masculine and body parts are recognizable, but emerged in fixed iconography. First, we will look at his appropriated work of Frida Kahlo's self-portrait, Thorn Necklace and Hummingbird. Kahlo is not considered a Western canon, but his extension to other non-Western images launches the reflection of identity deconstruction, as well as demonstrating a new fascination with making an imprint and reconstruction on all other art distinctions. He promotes hybridity and his presence in art history as a whole. Likewise, he appropriates Velasquez's Infanta, Infanta Margarita. Although there are obvious ambiguities in the size and shape of the child's hands and face, the image is an appropriation, not parody, further reinforcing reconstruction of hybridity, which juxtaposes his identity as a Japanese man to that of a child, once again confronting Japanese reliance on Western art. This image is overwhelming by the collusion of Mitch mismatched body parts um, and evokes a sense of the uncanny and therefore reinforces alterity, the alterity it disclaims. The three images that we will look at here are from the same series called The Sickness Unto Beauty, Self-Portrait as Actress, in which he presents himself as iconic females. The first image to the left is appropriated, is appropriating the infamous pinup commission by Hugh Hefner for the first issue of Playboy magazine in 1954. The gesture of burying her head into the shoulder is meant to accentuate the plastic breast and this wearing of the plastic breast destabilizes European, European painting canons through incorporation of the image of the oriental other. So we see this distinction of the other and the self as he 
others himself, but at the same time engages in this new self. It is a simultaneous turn on and turn off of the viewer slash voyeur's gaze. The second image is of Shima Ai Aiwashita. She's a famous Japanese actress uh, known for her roles in Yakuza gangster movies, where she plays roles of the strong wife and female boss. The performance does not employ any type of sensuality or sexiness. Instead, it's an untraditional female role. And part of this role is to wear a complete kimono, which is signature of female bosses. The third image to the right is a appropriation of Bridget Bardot, who's a singer, actress, and animal rights activist, and a sex symbol of the 50s and 60s. Her image is famous for portraying hedonistic lifestyle, which is the lifestyle of pure pleasure. So her image compared to the left image are both considered Western in Morimura's context. Her image, Bridget Bardot's, does not need to be overtly sexualized as her own persona is already being done. Whereas the image on the left, she is not a famous figure. She is just a woman that he puts himself into the role of. Shima Aiwashita is a more complex figure he puts himself into the role of. Whereas the Western images are simple and easy to produce because he is simply sexualizing himself, the middle image employs a narrative and cultural understanding of who she is and her role. The final image we will be looking at is that of the Futago, which appropriates Edward Manet's Olympia. This engages both his critiques of the male gaze and the hybridity, hybridity of self as he appears as an idealized nude and the realized fantasy of the West. He evokes hybridity in not only the figures in these photos, but also the implications behind them. Through his use of white and black face, positioning himself as the white central figure and her black servant, Morimura confronts the original painting's racial hierarchy with his own Japanese identity, referencing once again to the Orientalist traditions um, of feminizing Asian men and Asia as a whole. It also reflects Japanese relations to art, whereas this would be considered a masterpiece, he includes himself to now be a part of the narrative of art history. Through sitting as a central figure, which was originally intended to be an object of male gaze, he changes the position of the viewers and engages in blatant drag. By doing so, he challenges male voyeurism and this, in, this furthers the female critique, femini, femin, feminist critique. In addition, he slyly mimics the fetishized brushstrokes of the painters by using a palette knife to smear clear acrylic paint over the surface like the painting. He does a, another version of this 20 years later and this time he engages Japanese visual context. In conclusion, through recreating well-known images, he introduces his presence in all art, in all of art history and redefines the image's original concept. Embodying these recognizable figures through false disguise and drag allows him to claim the narratives of the original pieces and therefore creating his power and agency for which he gazes back at us. And here's my bibliography. Thank you very much.